Welcome to downtown Oklahoma City, Bricktown Ballpark. We're joined with a very, very special guest this afternoon on Dodgers Daily. Jack Dreyer joins for the second time. Jack, so pumped to get to talk to you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I'm excited too. Dad's in town, right? Yes, he is. That's significant because he played just down the road about three miles west at All Sports Stadium at the fairgrounds with Oklahoma City in the mid-90s. So That's right. Talk about the influence. Of course, he also played in the major leagues, pitched in the major leagues. Talk about his influence. Oh, yeah. I mean, growing up, knowing that he played for Oklahoma City back when I was in high school, I came here and was able to watch a game, and that was exciting. Um, oh, you with, got to come? With my mom. Yeah, oh, yeah we wow. came and watched the game here. Um, so that was exciting, and just the stories that he has for me, um, and obviously now that he's in town, you know, him being in the same ballpark as me is, is great. Obviously a different location, but same team, so it's a really, really good experience. So a lot, you know, a lot of guys that have major league dads, like they want to kind of, you know, they don't want to live in the footsteps of their dad. Now, you totally embrace that whole thing. So talk about that. Yeah, I think, uh, I think on the field we have our differences, and so yeah. that speaks for itself. And so, um, in terms of the path moving forward, that's, I'm totally comfortable with that being the same um, for both of us. And so, you know, obviously he had a chance to play in the big leagues, and that's that's been my dream for my whole life. So just going to focus on what I can control and, and go from there. Johnson, Iowa, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, I would assume that you're totally comfortable here? Yeah, yeah. Same humidity. It's hot in the summer. <laughs> yeah. um, just perfect baseball weather. You spent all last year in Great Lakes. You yes. started this year in AA Tulsa. Yep. You got the move up like real. I was like, dang, they're moving Maytag up to Oklahoma City already, right? Yeah. So were you surprised by that? And then talk about all of those quick transitions. Yeah, I was very surprised. Um, you know, I in in spring training i wasn't expecting to go to double a or anything like that like i said just focus on what i can control um, so when they told me i was going to tulsa i was very excited um, looking forward to it we had a great group of guys there um, and then like you said first month uh, i got called up and again um, i do my best not to think about that kind of stuff yeah. um, my job is just to focus on what i can control and that's one of the things that you can't control and so when they told me i was excited and um, a couple other guys got called up on the same day, and so we were all showing up at the same time, and it's yeah. just been great since then. So how are you such a humble dude, and then you go out on the mound and you're like the most competitive, fiery <laughs> guy of all time, and how does that work? <laughs> um, I think it's important to, to have feel um, around the field as much as possible. Um, you know, like care for your teammates, uh, be aware of what they're going through and what everybody's going through, and, and re realize that, you know, baseball doesn't need you. Um, you know, if I was not playing, the game would still go on. And so I think about that quite a bit. And so that's kind of my mentality moving into the game. So you're known as the Maytag. I think it's obvious with the last name Dreyer, where at least a part of that comes. But that's not the whole story about how you got the name Maytag, right? <laughs> no, not quite. Not quite. Um, well, I don't know if it's as obvious as you might think. My teammates don't get it sometimes. Okay. There are a few of them who don't understand. Um, but yeah, my mom grew up in a small town in Iowa called Newton. And uh, that's where the headquarters of the Maytag company is. And so um, we've had family members who worked for the Maytag family for generations. And um, so that's, that's kind of where it came from. So there's a little bit more in depth there. Very dependable too, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. Take us back to your time in Johnston, Iowa. You set a single game strikeout record for the finals of ever in Iowa Secondary Schools Activities Association. You went to the University of Iowa. Had a good start there, then the injuries happened, and then last year happened. So take us through that whole that whole deal. Yeah, starting in high school, um, lucky enough to play for who I consider to be the best high school coach there is, uh, Michael Barta. He, I mean, he's turned Johnson into an absolute legacy school, and just it domi they dominate every year. Um, this All Star break, I'm actually going home, and I'll get to see them play in the oh nice in the Substate games. So I'm excited for that. Um, so they're then, still playing. They are still playing, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, one of the states, actually the only state, I think, that plays in the summer. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's exciting. And then, uh, yeah, going to Iowa, tough tough career in college, kind of banged up quite a bit, you know, up and down seasons. Um, was able to luckily sign with the Dodgers, very thankful for that. Um, and then last year was the first year where I was able to kind of put things back together uh, health-wise, stay on the field the whole time. And I think that's just kind of the biggest thing, especially as a relief pitcher. Um, being available is the most important thing. And so I was able to do that last year. And, you know, our team had, had quite a bit of success. Four seam cutter, slider, curveball. That, that, is that the mix still? No cutter. 
just, no cutter. Just okay. fastball, slider, curveball. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, just just those three. That's it. So with a one inning setting, sometimes you go two innings. How do you get to that much stuff? Um, well, I mean, I was a starter my entire life until I got to the Dodgers. So I come from a background of throwing more pitches. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just are you able to execute them at a high at a high level and and often. Um, obviously, if you have a pitch that's good, but you can't throw it for strikes, it's not going to be very useful to you. So um, I think throwing things in the strike zone is important. And then just kind of playing them off of each other is, is really helpful. So you're very analytical. I mean, you're able to read swings. I mean, I, I've heard you say you're able to read swings and then adjust as far as your sequencing goes based on what you're seeing. Right. I mean, how do you throw it to a professional hitter in that type of competitive environment and you're able to read the hitter and then also execute at the same time? How does that all work? Um, I think I think a big part of, of approaching an at bat is knowing what makes you good, yeah. and that's different for everybody. And so, you know, if you look at a generic scouting report that says this guy struggles with whatever, um, it might not be worthwhile for me to attack that way because that's not what makes me good. And so, I think always using my strengths as opposed to attacking the hitter's weakness is is really important because. I would put my stuff up against the best hitters right. any day of the week. Um, and so I think it's just knowing what makes you good, and, and I think everybody on this team does a really good job of that. So the Dodgers have every modern metric, all the analytics available to you at your fingertips anytime you want it, but they're not going to shove it down your throat. So for a guy who's as analytical as you are, how do you use that kind of information to help you? Um, yeah, I, I think um, you know with, with certain pitches like my fastball, I know metrically – it kind of jumps out. Um, I have really good movement on it, and so that's what allows it to play so well, even though it's not at a super high velocity. Um, and then I have other pitches like my slider, which metrically aren't as good, but right. because of how it pairs with the fastball, right. it, it gets better. And so the Dodgers are just so good at, at knowing which pitches are metrically good versus useful. And, and using both, so kind of kind of the best of both worlds there. So the difference between results and having context as to why you get to those results. Yeah, exactly. Like, like I said earlier, you know, throwing a gross pitch yeah. for a ball isn't very useful. So, <laughs> so they do an excellent job of, of kind of sifting through the weeds there. So you're just one step away from the major leagues. I mean, your dad played in the major leagues. How do you keep your mind from wandering? Yeah, like I said, I mean, obviously the, the mind wanders there every once in a while and you know, we have teammates who get optioned up and down constantly. So, so we know that the moves are right there. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just focusing on what you can control. And that's just one of those things that you can't. So you have to do everything in your power just to focus on, you know, what you need to do to prepare, stay healthy, stay on the field, and that's it. Two light questions for me to end, Jack. And I think you know what's coming here. First of all, are you the best chess player in the game of baseball? <laughs> I, I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna go with the org. I'm gonna go with the whole game of baseball. In the game of baseball, um, I definitely think that I uh, am up there. I don't know how many guys play chess, but I would. I would take myself. Yeah, I'd say I'm. I'm up there. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty good at chess. In the org, are you the best? Do you think? Yeah. Okay. I, right. I think I'm one of like three guys that even knows how to play. Okay. This, so. Very nice. <laughs> very nice. Okay. Now, gotta end any kind of Maytag interview with can you still do the rubik's cube in 14 seconds i uh i haven't been training as much lately uh -oh. so the uh -oh. time slowed down a little bit but i i i'm confident that i could get it sub 20 sub 20, 20 seconds, sub yeah. 20 so where would that get you in a competitive tournament oh not not, not good nowhere close no, I, <laughs> I actually went to a competition and my average time was 20 point something and uh i placed 100th or, oh I'm really sorry, i'm sorry i placed 50th out of 100 and that was just in a small town in Iowa. So yeah, so so you're not you're not anywhere. No, no. <laughs> right. Hey, Absolutely Jack Dreyer, not. the Maytag. This has been such a honor for me to get to talk to you again, first time in person. So hey, I want to. I know you guys. You guys are so busy. So thank you so much for joining. And hey, best of luck, man. Absolutely. Thank you very much.